So I want to share a clip that I saw from The View where they talk about Hillary Clinton's smear of Tulsi Gabbard. So as you all know, Hillary Clinton called Tulsi Gabbard a Russian asset. And um, I want to talk about this because it really demonstrates the importance of people in power, people who are well-known, people with platforms, of getting things right, of sticking to the facts, right? Because you can easily spread misinformation, either knowingly or unknowingly, just by saying something. And even if it's an off-the-cuff remark, people will take what you say and they will run with it if they respect you. Because politics in America is very personality-driven. People like to rally around people as if they're cult leaders. And Hillary Clinton, there's absolutely a cult of personality that has all, you know, coalesced around her. And a lot of them exist within the mainstream media. So if Hillary Clinton says something, it's going to hold weight, like it or not. So in this clip here, they're going to talk about Hillary Clinton... And they're going to evaluate whether or not her smear of Tulsi Gabbard is uh, legitimate. And this is incredibly troubling, and it demonstrates why people need to be more responsible if they are well known. I mean, for me, honestly, you know, I mean, Hillary's been dead on with so many things. She told us about Russia. She told us about the probable interference during the debate. She was secretary of state. She has deep knowledge about world issues. I, I thought, where's the lie? You know, I've often said that Tulsi... Um, is sort of the Trojan horse in this. I mean, she's polling only at 1.2 percent, um, yet she's still in the race. You have her uh, being touted by people like Fox, um, Fox News personalities like um, Tucker Carlson. She's she endorsed. Is the, she's endorsed by you know by sort of the Russians. David Duke. David. Well, David Duke. She, she has. That she has basically re renounced yeah. that, but she's never renounced the. the Russian support. There have been about 20 Russian bot <coughs> websites that have supported her mm -hmm. since she's announced her, her run for the presidency. She I mean, tweeted back and called Hillary a warmonger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that does not do anything for me. She hasn't denied it. She hasn't said anything in her tweets. How dare you? That's outrageous. Of course I'm not. She didn't say that. Mm -hmm. no. She's just going after Hillary. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Hillary was right about almost everything. <coughs> She's been exonerated with that nonsense that they pulled about her, her server already. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and this idea that she, she's doing this to get back in the race, that she said that also, uh, Tulsi. I don't buy that either. I don't think Hillary wants to, wants to go through it again. So I, I think that there's something, I don't say that Tulsi is an agent. I just think that she could be a useful idiot the way Trump is a useful idiot to the Russians. Yeah. That they see, they see something. They say, oh, look, a useful idiot. Let's play this. Mm -hmm. And another point, they, the Republican Party knows that they cannot win without interference from Russia and maybe a voter suppression. They cannot win. Yeah. People in this country are against him now. And so they have to have it. And she's a perfect person to she's throw right in the foil. middle of this. She's a perfect foil. I don't think that she wants to be, maybe. I don't know. She's coming here in a couple of weeks, so we can See, ask I read her. this completely differently. Mm. I think for Hillary Clinton, one, she sounded like she has still an axe to grind in 2016. But if <coughs> you have played the political game for so many years, how can you be this clueless? Because she, in those comments, saying that Tulsi Gabbard's being groomed by the Russians, it makes her sound complicit with the Russians. It does. But it gives the Russians exactly what they want. They want the Democratic Party to be divided, right? If they like Tulsi Gabbard, they want more people to know Tulsi Gabbard. And so she was only promoted because of this. It really surprised me that Hillary Clinton wasn't smarter, more tactful in the way she talked about it. And frankly, if you're a Democrat, I think Tulsi has a lot to like. I think if anything, you no should Democrat want... No Democrat really likes her. That's why she's polling at 1.2%. I think she adds something unique to the party. What the Democrats, in my opinion, what I think they're missing is where a lot of the middle of this country is. And I think she's an isolationist. You know, Some people like that. She doesn't like wars. She's attracting people that I think you need that might vote for Trump. She's only that would attracting 1.2 percent. Look at okay. okay. When Jill well, Stein, when Jill Stein did it, and she's claiming that Jill Stein was a Russian asset in the last election, we didn't know it until after the election. Now we're looking at this with open eyes. Maybe we know it before. So that's a good. Well, she made a word it, to the wise is sufficient. Tulsi Gabbard may now go straight to the convention, and it, the same mm -hmm. thing is, could happen again. Well, she's I just think here. Hillary Clinton be a little bit smarter. Yeah. If you if you are going to throw stones from the sidelines, which I hate politicians if you're not in the race, then be a little more tactful about it when you speak, because you're only know. hurting your own party I, I by love doing that. that. So that was very troubling, and let me just say this. As someone with a very large platform myself, I have a quarter million subscribers now on our YouTube channel, um, it's almost terrifying to think about how easily I, if I don't get something right, if I am not, you know, really fact-checking myself and being 
incredibly rigorous with my research, I can mislead someone. And someone can just take what I said, run with it, and not think twice because they view me as a trustworthy source. That's troubling. Like, what we should be doing is, as leaders in any way, shape, or form, not that I'm a leader, but as political leaders, as people in media, we need to not just tell people what to think. Like, we need to tell people how to think. So use my statements, use the conclusions that I reach and how I get there, the mechanisms that drive me to that conclusion based on evidence and research and logic. Use that to come to your own conclusions. That's really what I think a responsible person in a position of power or influence would do. Hillary Clinton has no regard for that responsibility, none whatsoever. And uh, this is the consequence. She influences people on The View who respect her, and then they in turn spread her misinformation, and people who respect them and are fans of them believe that, and then now we're just, like, we're perpetuating the fake news that uh, we all complain about, that Donald Trump complains about. So Sonny Hostin, someone who generally I like the most on The View, said that Hillary's been dead on with so many things. She was Secretary of State. She has deep knowledge of world issues. So this is why Hillary Clinton... She's being incredibly reckless here. She is someone of immense power and influence. For her to just say something willy-nilly with no evidence to back it up, this is the result. You are spreading misinformation and you are slandering a member of Congress, presumably because your butt hurt that she didn't endorse you in 2016. Sonny also, uh, since she accepted the conclusion from Hillary Clinton that Tulsi Gabbard is in fact a Russian asset, began to rationalize it, right? Because the thing about these types of theories, we'll call this a conspiracy theory because I think that's what it is, is that once you accept that that conspiracy theory is valid, pretty much everything else in your mind points directly back to that conspiracy theory. So she starts bringing up these reasons why maybe it's true that Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian asset. She cites how she's pulling at 1%, but yet she's still in the race. Now, the thing with most conspiracy theories is you just have to think through them a little bit and you'll realize how stupid they are. Like with a flat earth theory about how, you know, uh, NASA is trying to stop people from believing that the world is in fact spherical. Well, you just have to ask why. Why do they have to make us believe that the earth is flat, right? The conspiracy theory kind of falls apart part because there's no motive there. there there's just once you apply the most minimum amount of logic to it it falls apart and in this instance Tulsi Gabbard's pulling at one percent yet she's still in the race um and guess who else is pulling at one percent pretty much everyone but Elizabeth Warren Bernie Sanders Joe Biden Pete Buttigieg Kamala Harris and Andrew Yang Michael Bennett John Delaney, all polling at or less than 1%, but yet they're not Russian assets. There's nothing suspicious there. It's only Tulsi Gabbard because Sonny Hostin has already bought into the premise that she's a Russian asset. So anything that seems a little bit off is just more evidence that she is, in fact, a Russian asset. Now, on top of that, she brings up how she goes on Fox News, and, you know, um, that's problematic. Even if I feel very uncomfortable with Tulsi Gabbard going on Tucker Carlson show regularly because he's a white supremacist. How is that evidence that she is, you know, a Russian Trojan horse or whatever? And also, since she never directly renounced the Russian support that she's getting, you know, there are numerous websites that are Russian troll sites, apparently supporting Tulsi Gabbard. You know, that's just more evidence that she is a Russian asset. Except, do you honestly believe that these troll organizations, one by one, however many exist, need to be renounced for her to prove a negative that she's not a Russian asset. I mean, do you understand why this is so troubling? People believe what Hillary Clinton says. And now everything else points back to Tulsi Gabbard being a Russian asset. Any behavior that they don't like or that they can't explain, you can draw a direct line between that and the fact, according to them, fact that she's a Russian asset. And it's incredibly troubling. This is exactly why... You have to be responsible if you are in a position of power or influence. Hillary is not. Now, Joy Behar said that, you know, Tulsi Gabbard tweeted back and called Hillary Clinton a warmonger. So that does not do anything for me. And also, she hasn't explicitly denied it. So, you know, since she's only choosing to go after Hillary Clinton and not necessarily 
address the merits of the claim that she's a Russian asset, that must be further proof that Tulsi Gabbard is in fact a Russian asset. Except, if you're being attacked by someone personally, it's only reasonable to just have a human response and hit them back. And that's what Tulsi Gabbard did. So she called Hillary Clinton a warmonger. And I don't know if that doesn't do anything for you, um, but it's true. It doesn't matter if you don't like that she called uh, Hillary Clinton a warmonger, rather. But it's true. Hillary Clinton is a warmonger. She is the embodiment of corruption. She is the establishment. People don't like Hillary Clinton because Joy Behar is an elite and she has a different perspective. You know, that type of criticism that Tulsi Gabbard lobbed back at Hillary, it's not going to resonate with her, but that doesn't mean that it's not necessarily true. And, you know, because she's going after Hillary Clinton, that's not further evidence that she's a Russian asset or a useful idiot to the Russian government. She's just doing what people do when they're backed into a corner. Bite back. That's, that's human. That's reasonable. But again... When you start to buy in to a conspiracy theory, any and everything is more evidence that your conspiracy theory is correct. On top of that, Joy Behar says the Republican Party know that they cannot win without interference from Russia and voter suppression. So on one hand, she is correct that voter suppression is something that the Republican Party has to utilize in order to make them more electorally viable. But in terms of them thinking that they need Russia to help them, I mean... This is really removed from reality. Think about one of the main reasons why Hillary Clinton lost. Because there were many districts, namely in the Rust Belt, that flipped from Obama to Trump because they felt abandoned by the Democratic Party. Now, if you say, I believe that Russian interference was part of the reason why Hillary Clinton lost, that's fine. I would disagree and think it was based on her being out of touch, her not running a good campaign. However, if you think that the only reason why Republicans win and Hillary lost is because of Russian interference, it just shows that you're not really paying attention. You don't have your finger on the pulse. The Democratic Party, any electoral victory will entirely hinge on how effective they are at getting out the votes, getting people excited, galvanized, registered to vote. Hillary didn't do that. In fact, in 2015, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, at the behest of Hillary Clinton, chose to forego the usual get out the vote campaign that the DNC always does in election cycles because she was worried that if there were too many new voters that might vote for Bernie Sanders instead of Hillary Clinton. So they delayed the get out the vote campaign until the general election. And at that point, you know, it was too late. They didn't get out the vote. They didn't excite non-voters. They didn't excite people to turn out. And whenever turnout is low, guess what? Republicans win. Republicans win. So they're going to do voter suppression. They're going to try to use their institutional advantages to make sure that they defeat Democrats. But in every single election, if we don't get out enough voters, we lose. People on the left, the Democratic Party, will lose if we don't do that. We have to acknowledge this, okay? We can't keep saying that Russia is exclusively responsible for Hillary Clinton's defeat. We can't say that it was James Comey's letter at the last minute that made Hillary Clinton lose. There's all these types of justifications for why she lost, but, you know, Hillary Clinton and anyone who is a loyalist to Hillary Clinton, they just can't acknowledge that maybe it wasn't all of these external factors. Perhaps you think that they played a role, and that's fine. But if you don't accept the reality that this loss was on Hillary Clinton and the DNC's back and their, their failure to mobilize enough voters, then I don't know what to say. So getting back to my original point, this is why we need people in power to acknowledge the tremendous amount of influence that they have. And I want them to be, you know, some somewhat responsive at least to that. Acknowledge the responsibility to not spread misinformation, to not just say something if you don't have the evidence to back it up. If you're going to make that big of a logical leap, you've got to have a bevy of evidence to fuel that leap. Hillary didn't have it, and now we're seeing the consequence. We're seeing how this impacts political discourse in a really negative way. And it's just unfortunate because we were already divided enough in America, and then you have Hillary Clinton thrown back into the mix to say this for who knows why. And um, this is what's happening. It's, it's just... It's demoralizing, to say the least. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? 
And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.